Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and thanks for stopping by. If this is your first time here, my name is Stephanie and I hope you'll consider subscribing and sticking around for a little while. Today I'm going to show y'all how I made this gorgeous coastal themed bathroom decor using items mostly from the Dollar Tree along with just a few supplies from Hobby Lobby and Walmart. Let's go ahead and jump right into DIY number one. For this project, I started with one 4.62 inch glass candle dish from Hobby Lobby, one 5 inch candle plate from Walmart, and one 4.9 inch bubble ball vase from Dollar Tree. First, I took the 4 inch candle dish outside and gave both sides three heavy coats of Krylon Sea Glass spray paint in the color Sea Foam, making sure to let it dry well between coats. I also took the 5 inch glass candle plate and gave both sides three heavy coats of Rust-Oleum multicolored textured spray paint in the color Desert Bisque, again letting it dry well between coats. While the two candle dishes were drying, I took one of the round green floral foam pieces from Dollar Tree and used the ball vase to measure where I needed to cut the foam so that it would fit inside the top of the vase. Once I had the mark where I needed to cut, I used a paint scraper to cut the foam. I found this to be the easiest and fastest way to cut through these round pieces. While I was cutting the foam, I did not worry too much about keeping it completely even since this is gonna represent the ocean floor part of the scene. I wanted it to have a few small lumps and bumps so that it would look more authentic. This cut side is the side that's going to be visible from inside the vase. Although I did go ahead and go back once I had the piece cut and cleaned up the top just a bit so that it wouldn't have any huge lumps and bumps. To make the top of the candle holder, I used some clear Gorilla Super Glue around the edges of the bottom of the ball vase and placed the sea foam candle dish on top, making sure it was as centered as possible. I then placed a heavy glass candle in the candle dish so that the weight of the candle would help hold the dish in place until the glue was dry. I then set this piece aside to dry for about two hours, although it does take this glue a full 24 hours to fully cure. Next, I took the piece of floral foam I cut for the seabed and gave the top and sides one heavy coat of apple barrel paint in the color nutmeg brown. To create the look of an ocean floor, I used some Mod Podge and some stone granules that I picked up at Walmart. I worked in small sections applying a generous layer of the Mod Podge and then some of the stone granules until the top and sides of the foam was completely covered. I did not put any of the granules on the bottom of the foam because I knew that I would be gluing it to the bottom plate, so no need to paint it or cover it with the granules. I then set this piece aside to dry for a couple of hours. Now, if you're lucky enough, your Dollar Tree may have some sand that you can use instead of buying these granules, but neither one of my Dollar Trees had any sand and it was too wet for me to go to the local river and pick up sand that way. So you don't necessarily have to have these particular granules to do this project. Next, I took one of these wooden anchor ornaments from Dollar Tree and painted the front and back with one coat of folk art paint in the color medium gray. Once that was dry, I took some apple barrel paint in the color white and working in small sections, I applied a layer of white paint and immediately while it was still wet, took a paint scraper and used a little bit of pressure to scrape off the excess paint. This allowed the gray paint to come through and still be seen. I used this method on the front and back side of the anchor. This gave the anchor a nice weathered look, and best of all, if you take too much of the paint off the first time, you can always add more until you're happy with the finished look. To finish up the anchor, I took some jute cord from Walmart and wrapped it around the anchor to look like the anchor line and used hot glue to hold it into place. I would like to take this time to once again thank you for stopping by and spending a part of your busy day with me. All the support, likes, comments, and subscriptions mean the world to me, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't already, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and become part of our little family here on YouTube. Once the ocean floor piece was completely dry, I used a generous amount of hot glue to glue it to the center of the 5-inch candle plate. I used hot glue for this because I knew I was going to be sealing it with the glass vase, but if you wanted to use E6000 or a stronger adhesive, you could do that as well. 
To decorate the ocean floor, I used the anchor I painted, a few shells out of these bottles, some blue, yellow, and pink willow branches, a seahorse and starfish pin, and some sea glass, all of which that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I removed the seahorse from the clothespin and painted it with one coat of folk art enamel paint in the color gold. I did end up going back in and using the white paint technique over the top of the gold later on. To decorate the ocean floor, I started by cutting off the tip of the anchor so that it would fit inside the bubble vase. I used a paint scraper to create a slit in the floral foam so that the anchor would sit down inside the foam and look like it's covered in the sand. I then used some hot glue to hold it into place. Next, I used some of the willow branches and hot glued them behind the anchor to look like coral. Once I had all the branches hot glued in place, I went ahead and took some scissors and cut them down right above the anchor so that they would fit nicely under the vase. Next, I took one of the starfish off the clothespins and hot glued it in front of the anchor. I took the seahorse and hot glued it to the other side of the anchor just a little bit up to make it look like it was swimming through the coral. You'll notice here that it's still gold, but I do go back and use that same technique as I used on the anchor with the white paint so that it looks a little more natural. I then took two of the small shells and a pearl bead and hot glued the bead inside one of the shells and hot glued the other shell on top to make it look like a clam with a pearl in it. I then hot glued this to the ocean floor in front of the seahorse. Next, I used three different colors of sea glass and hot glued them down in front of the starfish. To finish off the front of the ocean floor, I took two more of the small shells and hot glued one by the pearl and the other under the starfish. Here's how the front of the ocean floor turned out. And here's how the back turned out. I just pretty much done the same thing using bigger pieces. I used more of the clear Gorilla Glue Super Glue to attach the top of the candle holder to the bottom plate. I carefully went around the opening of the vase with the super glue, being careful not to get too much so that it wouldn't run down the inside of the vase. Once I had the super glue around the vase, I very carefully set it down over the ocean floor scene and set a glass candle on top to help hold it in place while the glue set up. I wanted to make sure the top was secure, so once I had it in place, I went ahead and went around the outside with more super glue and then set it aside to dry overnight. To finish up this project, the next day I took some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and went around the bottom of the candle holder to hide the gap between the vase and the plate, and I also went ahead and went around the top of the candle holder right underneath the candle plate to hide the area where the two pieces were glued together. I know this project was a little more detailed and time consuming than my normal projects, but I fully believe that it was worth it with the end result. I'm absolutely in love with this candle holder and I hope y'all like it as well. Before we get started on the next DIY, I want to tell you a little bit about today's video. It's part of this wonderful open challenge playlist full of nautical fun inspiration hosted by some of my favorite creators here on YouTube. These ladies are so talented, so if you haven't checked them out yet, be sure to check out Emily, Missy, Amanda, and Lisa. I will link their channels in the description box below as well as leave a link to the playlist so you can get even more fun nautical inspiration. All right, let's go ahead and get started with DIY number two. For the base of this project, I used one of these glass cutting boards from Dollar Tree. I took it outside and gave the front and back two good coats of the Krylon Sea Glass Spray Paint in the color Sea Foam, letting it dry well between coats. For the storage part of this project, I used three of these glass sugar pourers from Dollar Tree. I removed all the lids and took some wire cutters and cut off the little tab on the inside of the lid so that I could easily remove the other little lid that covers the pour spout. I wanted these storage jars to be three different heights, so I took one of the lids and glued it to the bottom of one of the glass jars. I used Gorilla Clear Grip Glue and hot glue to attach the lid to the glass. When doing this, try not to mix the hot glue with whatever stronger adhesive you're using. In my experience, I've found that if the hot glue happens to mix with the stronger adhesive, it makes a mess and neither glue sets up properly. Next, I took one of the wooden blocks from Dollar Tree and using hot glue and Gorilla Glue, I glued it to the top of one of the lids. And then I glued the other lid on top of the block, trying to get it as centered as possible. To help me do this, I used the little holes in the top of the lids to line them up so that they would be fairly even. 
Once I had the two lids glued together, I went ahead and used the same combination of glue to attach the glass jar on top of the top lid. This will give me the three different heights for the storage jars. I used some nautical rope from Dollar Tree to cover up the lids and to make this look like one cohesive set. I started at the bottom of the lid and wrapped up and over the bottom lip of the jar. You'll notice after I wrap the rope one time around the lid, I start putting the glue more on the rope than on the lid or the glass. That way it's more secure because as we all know, glass and metal do not care much for hot glue and it will not stick. And I found that if I glue the rope directly to the rope, it holds much better. I then repeated this step on the other two jars. Once I had the bottom of all three jars wrapped, I decided I wanted to wrap the nautical rope one time around the top of the jars to help hide where the lids originally screwed on. I used hot glue to do this and it's held up fine, but if you wanted to, you could use a stronger adhesive here since it's just one single wrap. I wanted these jars to resemble a set of piling pier posts, so I placed the two taller jars in the back and the shortest jar in the front. Then I took the leftover nautical rope and wrapped it around the middle of the three jars twice. I used hot glue to tack the rope into place before I went back and actually glued the two pieces of rope together. But again, if you wanted to, you could use a stronger adhesive for a more permanent hold. I did end up using a total of three packs of nautical rope for this project. Next, I used one of the little wooden anchors out of this wood cutout pack that I was lucky enough to find at my Dollar Tree and painted it with white apple barrel paint. To finish up this project, I placed the jars on the base and filled them up with bathroom essentials such as Q-tips, cotton rounds, and band-aids, all in coastal colors, of course. Then, once the anchor was dry, I hot glued it to the rope in the center of the front jar, and that was it for this one. I really do love how this turned out. Moving right along to DIY number three. To create this bathroom accessory set, I used a soap dish, a toothbrush holder, a hand soap dispenser, and a waste basket, all from Dollar Tree. I took one of the larger wooden anchor cutouts and three of the small anchor wooden cutouts, all from Dollar Tree, and painted just the front of them with one light coat of Krylon Sea Glass Spray Paint in Seafoam. Once the anchors were dry, I took some apple barrel paint in white and a paint scraper and used the same method I used in the first project to weather the anchors. Next, I used this natural jute cord from Hobby Lobby and wrapped the soap dish completely and then the toothbrush holder and the soap dispenser I only wrapped about halfway up. I also used the same jute cord to wrap halfway up the waste basket. I used some hot glue to glue the large anchor in the center of the top half of the waste basket. And in case you're wondering, I used Gorilla hot glue sticks. I used Gorilla clear grip glue to attach the small anchor in the very center of what is now a trinket tray, and then to attach the other two anchors to the top half of the toothbrush holder and soap dispenser. To finish up this bathroom set, I thought the waste basket needed a little something extra, so I took some more of the jute cord and went around the top lip of the waste basket twice, and that was it for this project. I am absolutely thrilled with how this set turned out. It's better than I had imagined. Who would have guessed that $5 from Dollar Tree would have turned into this? Let's get into DIY number four. For this project, I'm going to use one of these large white baskets with handles from Dollar Tree. Again, just like in the last project, I'm going to use the same jute cord and wrap the basket halfway up. I want all of these projects to look cohesive. Once that was done, I went ahead and wrapped the very top ring of the basket along with the handles with the same jute cord. Here's how the basket looked once it was completely wrapped. I did not really want to put y'all to sleep making y'all watch me wrap jute over and over again, so I thought it would just be easier to show you once it was finished. Then to finish off the towel basket, I took another one of the large wooden anchors that I had painted with the seafoam paint and weathered and hot glued it to the center in the top half of the basket. And that's it. Really simple, just a lot of wrapping involved, but so, so worth it. Just like the other projects in this video, it's a lot of repetitive wrapping of jute, but the end results are absolutely gorgeous. I would just say turn on a favorite movie, music, or whatever and wrap away. Last but not least, DIY number five, this one might be my favorite. 
I picked up this big bag of shells on sale at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to be using the two biggest shells, the conch shell and the large flat shell. First, I glued the conch shell upside down on the flat shell so that the opening was upright. Next, I put a piece of floral foam down inside the shell. It was a tight enough fit that there was no need for glue. To make the arrangement, I used three more of the shells from the Hobby Lobby bag, a few pieces of sea glass, some yellow and blue willow branches, two starfish, a couple wooden skewers, greenery picks, and a white floral pick all from Dollar Tree. I started building the arrangement with the willow pieces and other florals. There was absolutely no rhyme or reason to how I arranged these florals other than keeping the tallest pieces in the back and the shorter greenery pieces in the front and on the sides. I arranged the florals in a way that looked best to my eye so you can definitely use the colors and florals that look good to your eyes which is the best part of DIYing if you ask me. You will notice in the final reveal that I did end up taking out the greenery that looked like carrot leaves and replacing them with the smaller greenery pieces instead. I felt like the larger carrot greenery looking pieces made the overall finished project look a little too fake. Once I was happy with the way the florals looked, I went ahead and hot glued the seashells and the starfish onto the wooden skewers. If you want to use a stronger, more long-term adhesive for this, you definitely could do that as well. I then placed them into the arrangement. Again, there was no particular rhyme or reason. I just went with whatever looked most pleasing to my eye. Next, I went ahead and glued three of the bigger pieces of the sea glass down inside the flat shell beside the conch shell on what was going to be the front of the arrangement. Then to finish off this project, I added the last starfish to the very front and that was it. Super quick and easy, but so beautiful. I absolutely love how this one turned out. Like I said, it may be my favorite out of all of today's projects. Here's one final look at all of today's projects. I absolutely love how they all turned out, and for the most part, they were all super simple and easy to make, just a little bit time-consuming wrapping all that jute, but honestly, it was so worth it. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps me out here on YouTube. Also, if you'd be interested in seeing a coastal-themed tiered tray video, let me know that as well. I have several ideas. Anyways, thanks so much for stopping by, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around. I have a bunch of fun projects on the way. Also, be sure to check out the link to the playlist in the description box below for even more nautical inspiration. I'll see y'all next time.